Welcome to the wonderful world of chemistry. What's kind of nice about chemistry is I can relate a lot of the stuff we do in class to you and your life and things around you and all the wonderful things that make your life as awesome as it is. Um, so what we're going to do is take a brief intro into this wonderful world. And as it says there, our goal in this unit and throughout the whole year is to see how chemistry makes so many things possible and how much it affects our everyday life activities. So what exactly is chemistry concerned with? Basically, chemicals, the properties of those chemicals, and the changes that they can undergo, which is where a lot of the fun happens when we do reactions, for example, and the changes of those chemicals. Now, what are chemicals and where do they come from? You can see this here. These are your notes, so please write down what you need to write down in order to be a successful learner. But as I wrote here, a chemical is any substance that has a defined composition. Some of them exist naturally on our planet, the oxygen in the air, carbon dioxide in the air, nitrogen in the air, water in the lakes, rivers, streams, and oceans, and atmosphere. Some of them we have to manufacture, like gasoline. We don't pull gasoline out of the ground. We pull crude oil, and then we have to take it to a refinery and get gasoline and other kerosene and other petroleum products out of it. And some are taken from natural materials. For example, aluminum comes from a mineral. A lot of our elements are found in minerals. And for aluminum, bauxite, that's the mineral that aluminum is found in. So oxygen, gasoline, aluminum, all of those are chemicals. And they have either found naturally, manufactured, or taken from other natural materials. Now what are some positive and negative aspects of chemicals and chemistry? Well, positively, we see some of these things. Health and medicines and the fantastic, wonderful world of medicine that keeps us living longer and longer all the time. And part of that is cleanliness uh, and disease prevention and doing disinfections and all the you know, hand sanitizers and stopping plagues from spreading, for example. The ease of your life. So much has been made possible courtesy of technology, and a lot of technology is linked to chemistry, like silicon wafers and making the ability to have technology be so small. Plasma screen televisions and liquid crystal displays and LED lighting and tons of stuff. Your life in general, what you're made of, your genetics, the DNA code, deribo, uh, sorry, <laughs> the nucleic acids. <laughs> I had a little brain freeze there. You breathe in oxygen. You exhale carbon dioxide. Everything you you know eat is turned into energy, courtesy of chemical reactions. So, lots and lots of positives coming from chemicals and chemistry. But there's also negatives: pollution addictions from medicines, for example, chemical warfare, nuclear bombs, many things, many chemicals are carcinogenic, which is kind of a catch-22 because they can cause cancer, but one of the ways we fight cancer is chemotherapy and radiation therapy, so using chemistry to fight the cancers as well. And there are limited supplies of many of our chemicals, and so that's why we need you as problem solvers to find other ways to accomplish the same tasks that we as humans have become accustomed to. You know, we're going to run out of oil, so that's why you know we have these hybrid cars and electric cars and hopefully maybe someday hydrogen fuel cell cars. So that's just a glimpse into the positive, positive and negative world of chemistry, so you get the gist there. Now let's take a look at probably my favorite definition of the year, matter anything that takes up space and has mass. Anything. Probably mostly the only thing that isn't matter is antimatter, which you can study later in life. But the space is what we call volume. Volume is the space that an object occupies, whereas the mass, that's the amount of matter that an object contains. And I put down there constant, because yes, there is a difference between mass and weight. And even though I interchange them myself all the time, technically there is a difference. Weight is a measure of gravity. Sorry. So the measure of the gravitational force that we exert on an object. And that changes with location. So for example, this little person 
is 63.5 kilograms on Earth, on the Moon, on Jupiter, on the Sun. The same amount of mass. If I shoot you to the Moon right now, all of your atoms and molecules and everything you're made of go with you. But the gravity changes, and so the weight changes, and we end up seeing a, a reflection of that in pounds or newtons. And so 140 pounds on Earth is 23 pounds on the Moon, because there's a lot less gravity. 355 pounds on Jupiter, much more gravity. 3,914 pounds on the Earth, or I'm sorry, on the Sun, because there's a ton more gravity. So again, mass is constant, weight changes based on gravity. But most of us don't ever experience a gravitational change for an extended amount of time in our lives. So we pretty much just look at the mass and weight being the same in our life experiences. But they're not technically on a scientific level. Now the last little thing here, when we're looking at matter, we can look at it qualitatively and quantitatively. Qualitatively is just descriptions. Quantitatively is with numbers, measurements. And those numbers typically need units that go along with them. And we'll be looking at international scientific units, the metric system, basically. And so just as a little reminder of how awesome the metric system is and how awful our system is, the meter. So here we see a meter, and typically you could measure someone's height with a meter and say that they're about 2.3 meters tall. And we can adjust the meter if we were talking about larger distances. We can talk about kilometers, kilometers. And so between Mentor and Chicago is 595 kilometers. You could still say 595,000 meters. It's just very user-friendly and puts it in a much more manageable number. We can also look at small things. This little bug is almost 7 millimeters long. Again, I could say 0 .007 meters, since each millimeter is a thousandth of a meter. But it's just nice to say 7 millimeters instead. And we also have teeny, teeny, tinier things, like atoms. The diameter of a hydrogen atom is 0 0.000000000120 meters not as easy to say as 120 picometers. Now we'll do much more with measurements and units further along down the line, but I just wanted to start kicking your scientific brain into motion, waking it up from the summer. Alright, catch you in the next video.